Hello, AP Psychology students, and welcome to Chapter 5 on Consciousness. Uh, looking at body rhythms and mental states. We're going to look at sleep and, and dreaming and all that, and some other altered states of consciousness and all that. And so, uh, to start, we have a picture of my, my younger brother, Matt, uh, who fell asleep all the time. Uh, you get him in the car when he was younger, you go like two minutes, he's asleep in the back seat. Took him to a Rockies game, he's asleep. Broncos game, he's asleep. Even the drag races at Vandermeer, he fell asleep. So what was going on with him? This is my sister Jenny here. So let's get into that. Today we're going to talk about biological rhythms and the tides of experience. Uh, consciousness is the awareness of oneself and the environment that you are lucid. You are aware of what's going on. You're awake and things are going on. Uh, we all have biological rhythms, a clock in your brain that governors, governs the rise and fall of the systems of the body. Uh, so it's not just being alert and being awake and focused. There's other things that are going on in the body, which we're going to look at. Uh, it is endogenous, meaning it's generated within our bodies. We have chemicals that make us alert. We have chemicals that make us drowsy. Uh, and so it's called the circadian rhythm, which is our biological rhythm for our bodies that lasts about 24 hours. Uh, circadian, the term comes from the Latin phrase for about a day, circa dia. Circa dia, around a day. Um, and so where we get the term circadian. Uh, so our sleep-wake cycle is the best known. There's some other things that are going on too. Uh, any of you guys have the good old Apple Watch here. It keeps track of your, your rhythms and you can actually pair it with your calendar and it will tell you your physical, mental, psychological, emotional peak and uh, bottom based on your natural rhythms, based on your heart rate uh, and kind of things, how you go, your sleep-wake cycle. You have peaks and valleys every month of your, your body, how strong you are, how, bot how your metabolism works. Uh, your emotions, and then, um, you know, kind of the, the, the mental stuff, too, how well you can think. Um, so it also regulates body temperature, menstruation, which is, you know, the female side, stomach activity, hormone levels, cognitive performance, and alertness. So let's get into this. This is the typical human circadian rhythm. Um, you're supposed to go to bed around 10 or 11, which I know you at home, you're probably not. So if you do that, if you go to bed around 10, Let's say 11, your deepest sleep should be around 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, your body temperature falls as you're sleeping, and so your lowest body temperature is at 4.30. Um, and then, basically, when you wake up at around 6, your sharpest blood pressure rises at 6.45 because you realize you're late, and the kids aren't ready, and you got to get out the door, and you're like, oh, i got to get there. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, but then it takes a full hour and a half for melatonin secretion to stop after you wake up. Uh, so if you're waking up before school at 7.30 and getting to class at 8 o'clock because you're one of those people, your body is still producing melatonin, which makes you sleepy. Uh, and so you are drowsy in that first class, and maybe it's a math class, heaven forbid, and they got the lights off, and, and you're out. Uh, and so your highest alertness should be around 10. So four hours after you're awake, you wake up is when you're the most alert. Um, and then in the afternoon is when your body's the most coordinated, around 2.30. So hopefully your weight training or PE class is then. Our fastest reaction time is 3.30. Our greatest cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength is in the evenings, which is good because that's usually when the athletic practice and games are. Well, a lot of games. Um, and then your blood pressure is high at 6.30. Your temperature is hottest at 7. And then the body starts to slow down uh, because basically the, the light um, of the sun wakes us up. And then when it goes down, we're supposed to go to sleep. That's how it works in, that, in nature. Uh, so if you're a basketball player like I coach, we play at 7 o'clock, sometimes 7.30, sometimes 8.30, sometimes 9, which goes against what your body should do. Uh, but your melatonin secretion starts around 9, so you start getting drowsy and you fall asleep in the chair trying to watch the news. So they exist in humans, animals, insects, even plants have these circadian rhythms. Uh, it's associated with light, air pressure, and temperature. Um, so as things warm up, we actually get a little more alert too just during the day. Uh, society keeps people in rhythms as well. People are cut off if they're cut off from their schedules, if we just put them in a room with artificial light all the time, um, uh, or if they are put on a 28-hour day, they still maintain a 24-hour rhythm. So you can basically change their schedule. They can go from nights to days or days to nights. You can put them in a room with lights. You can put them on a 28-hour artificial day. You know, So the sun's up 14 hours and it's down 14 hours, and still our bodies maintain this 24-hour rhythm. Oops, let me go back. Uh, the comic here is from Zitz, very funny. Morning, Pierce. If you say so, yawn. I don't do time like most people. I live by circadian rhythms, eating when I'm hungry and sleeping when I'm tired. 
which is pretty much always. Uh, those circadians really knew how to live, man. All right, so our body's clock. It is controlled by the hypothalamus, which we learned in the last chapter. Uh, controls our four Fs, food, fight, flight, and fun, but also it's a master gland. It tells the other glands what to do. So it signals the pituitary gland, uh, the master gland, and the pineal gland. The pineal gland is the one that secretes melatonin. So there's a tiny cluster of cells which is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or the SCN. Um, they're the neural pathways that transmit visual information to the SCN. So basically it tells us there's lights on, we should be awake. There's lights off, we should be asleep. Uh, so this is why many of you probably get drowsy in class if the teacher turns the light off. Uh, so it sends the messages out to the body to adapt. It regulates our hormone levels, our neurotransmitters, uh, and then mel melatonin, like I said, gets the order from the hypothalamus to be produced from the pineal gland to make us drowsy. If you like celestial season sleepy time tea, which is made in Boulder, Colorado, by the way, uh, that has melatonin. Bananas naturally have melatonin. So if you're eating a banana with your cup of coffee, you're kind of confusing your body. Uh, and so you can actually take artificial uh, melatonin uh, to treat insomnia and to, to help with disturbed sleep-wake cycles. Um, it has mixed reviews for sighted people. Um, people that are blind take a melatonin supplement and it helps them on a regular sleep-wake cycle because it's always dark. So that's where these little things come in. If you are sleeping with this in your room, this blue light keeps you awake and it disrupts your rhythms. And so when you're in your bedroom and you're staring at your phone, that disrupts you. It tells the brain to be awake, to be alert. And so if you're having trouble going to sleep, you need to keep this out of your room or don't ever look at it. Your room should be sleep only. If you wanna surf, you wanna look at the, the internet or look at a new tickety tockety video, do it out in the living room or somewhere where the lights are on. Your bedroom, when you go to bed, it should be for sleep. So your brain knows it's dark, I'm going to bed. So when our clocks are out of sinks, you know, we have this twice a year, we get daylight savings and that's always so fun. So our normal routine changes can throw the rhythms off. This is called internal desynchronization, which is caused by jet lag, uh, new work shifts, daylight savings time. There's there's increased heart attacks during daylight savings. There's increased auto accidents. Um, if you fly east, it's very difficult to do. When you go east, it's harder to adjust. They say for every time zone, you need that many days to get into a normal rhythm. So if you fly to Europe, which is usually 10 or 12 hours ahead, it's going to take almost two weeks to get back to normal. When you fly home to America, it takes about a half day for every time zone to get back. So it doesn't take as long to adjust when you're coming back. So temperature, hormones, energy levels, mental skills, motor coordination all take longer to adjust when you have jet lag or daylight savings. And sometimes it seems like daylight savings, you know, it's a couple days that it hits you. Uh, people are more prone to accidents during this. Rhythms can also vary from stress, from illness, circumstances, genetics. There's a lot of things that can affect what's going on. Sorry, we had a little noise, had to check out. Um, this is a picture of me in Rome. Uh, we flew there for our honeymoon. My wife and I, we woke up in the dead of night at like 2 a.m., could not go to sleep. So we just got up and started exploring. This is the sun coming up along the Coliseum because we were just wide awake at 2 a.m. because we were out of rhythm. So one thing that you probably heard about, and it's coming because it's winter, winter is coming. Thank you, Game of Thrones. Is seasonal affective disorder or SAD. People who are depressed in the winter. So sadness, lethargy, drowsiness caused by less light because the sun's not up as much. It can be treated with phototherapy uh, and people buy these artificial sunlights and do they actually work? Major seasonal depression in the United States is only 0.4% of the people. It just doesn't really exist. Yes, we do get moodier. Yes, we put on a little extra pounds during the winter. You know, and then there's the stress of the holidays and there's the stress of an incoming quarantine probably. Or... You know, I spent all that money for Christmas and I ate all that candy. So we deal with some moodiness in the winter, but actual seasonal affective disorder or SAD is not very prevalent. Um, there's major versions, and then if you include the minor versions, only 1% of people actually get it. Yeah, we get the winter blues, but we live in Colorado. Go play in the snow, go skiing, go sledding, go ice fishing. Uh, Meta-analysis of 20 studies showed that light therapy could help with mild to moderate seasonal affective disorder or non-seasonal depression. Doesn't really help with the major issues. And, and we talked about other variables that may contribute, as I stated here. So Alaska is known for having 
uh, number one in suicide. And people say, well, it's because it's dark, you know, so dark for half the year, but then it's light for half the year. So that's what their state is worst at, which is always fun to look at all of these. You might just pause this and take a little moment to, to admire what every state is best at. Um, I, I, I do love some of these. They're very funny. Um, I don't know how North Dakota got rated the ugliest. We'll just move on from there. Um, so lots of controversy over women's menstrual, menstrual, menstrual cycle. Excuse me. Um, people have heard of PMS, premenstrual syndrome. Pre, um, and so estimates are that 13% of women actually have it. Um, but let's get into this. Most women have physical symptoms from fluctuating hormones. Yes, there is bloating. There is cramping. There's a lot of discomfort going on. But does it actually cause stress? Does it actually cause this PMS? Uh, emotional symptoms are actually very rare. It's more the physical stuff that's going on. Uh, more women claim to have PMS than actually they really do. And before you attack me on this, remember our book was written by two women. And actually the, the next edition of the Purple Book is written by three women. These are their words, not mine. Only 5% of women have emotional symptoms which are predictable over their cycles. Uh, it's easy to blame hormones for bad feelings instead of the real causes of stress. And so what happens is sometimes if you have a bad day and then that's going on, you go, oh, that's why. That's why I'm upset. Not that you failed your psychology test because you didn't watch this video. Um, and so they've done double blind studies. And this one's really interesting. They had women report daily, how do you feel? You know, are you positive or are you negative? Um, and so you can see very little fluctuation when they menstruate, it went down a little bit, ovulation goes up, and then, you know, premenstrual goes down and goes down. Um, but then they had people go, another group go back and retroactively put how their mood was. And so then they had to see what their cycle was. And so when they went back, instead of doing it daily, going, I feel this, I feel like a four out of 10 or a five out of 10, when they went back and, and it wasn't in the actual day-to-day, -day, you can see the spike went up much, much higher when they were menstruating, went down when it was ovulating. Um, they were more positive, actually, and then they went down for PMS. Uh, so this was coming off menstruation and then ovulation and then um, pre-menstruation. It's kind of funny. They did the daily men report. They had men as a control as well, and you can see men are just as moody. And they're just overall more negative. So that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, let me know. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Happy sleeping.